So imagine I've got a bunch of apps installed on my phone. Of course, I can set up live tiles. But if I'm installing 30, 40, 50 apps, um, I'm going to be more likely to use the app list over here. And there are a few things that we're doing to make it easier for end users to get to your apps if the list is really long. We automatically detect a long list now. And you'll see here the letters present in the list, just like we have in contacts. We've implemented a jump list for apps. So if you want to get to Twitter, you touch A, you touch T, boom, there's Twitter. You can launch it. You might notice right there there's a little search button. I can now touch that and do text typing to search my giant list of installed apps. So let's say I want to launch my Amazon app. I can type AM. Boom, it's filtered right away to Amazon, and I can launch the app. Right away, you might notice a few things that are going to be a great enhancement for end users and help them find your apps. I've, I've done a search here, and the first thing you see is it's filtered just by apps better than when we shipped Windows Phone 7. And there's a lot more metadata shown here. The publisher is shown, the price is shown, the rating is shown. Uh, and this list is provided by top downloads or, or popularity of apps. So users can find the apps they want. Um, if I wanted to find a podcast, we're going to have support for podcasts on the device in the marketplace in the US this fall. I'm going to click to install this. We've streamlined this process. For free apps, you confirm one time. We automatically navigate over to the app list or the games hub where the app's going to be installed. And you see right there, uh, the Amazon Kindle app, as soon as I get network connectivity, is going to start installing. There's a little progress bar. When it's done, the tile will light up, and the app is installed. So what I'm going to do, actually, is use our built-in multitasking UI here. Or if I pan to the left, all of these cards, which come with search results, places, movies, and so on, now have a pivot for extras. Just like in the hubs, this is a place where we're going to connect user actions on the phone with your apps. Let's see if I can play the preview. Oops. Developers, 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 yes, that would be appropriate for me this week. So let's say I want to I make that my Windows Phone ringtone. I can just touch. The file is downloaded from the web service. And now the ringtone API is used where I, I can specify I want this to be set as my ringtone or simply add it to my ringtone list. Voila, it's done. It's now a ringtone. But the thing that we're doing that's kind of interesting here is when you think about this user experience of scanning a barcode, in that particular case, I had to launch the app, navigate around, find the UI for scanning a barcode. Useful but not particularly convenient. We thought we could do better. We're the Glance and Go platform. So what we're going to let you do is pin live tiles that deep link into your app right on the home screen. So here I'm going to choose Pin to Home. And what I get right there is a live tile that jumps right to the barcode scanning. Well, it's almost time for me to go. So I'm going to take this and actually pin it to my Start menu as well. So now I have two tiles for the Qantas app, each representing something that I care about, my flight today and my flight tomorrow. And you can see they're giving me different notifications. That tile was telling me, check-in is now open for my flight tomorrow. OK, that's useful information. Let's say I'm going to go back in here, and I'm going to go through the check-in process so I, I know I'm checked in. I touch the live tile, and as you saw in other examples earlier today, the live tile links deeply into the app. I could choose check in now. I won't bother to do that. I could look at my arrival or booking info and so on. Um, imagine that I checked in. Time has elapsed. It's now important for me to get to the airport. I'm here on stage with you when really I have this 1030 flight. What am I doing? In a few seconds, the app's going to notify me, hey, Here's an alarm, taking advantage of those multitasking capabilities. You're, you got a flight. You should probably be thinking about getting going. You're, you're within this time window. And in fact, if I scroll down now and take a look at those live tiles, you see this first flight has turned from green to red because it knows my location. Its background live agent is checking my location, checking the time, saying, OK, where you are, based on the time, you better get going to the airport or you might miss your flight. This app's going to help me out by showing one of our new launchers, which is the ability to jump right into directions. So if I'm going to head to the airport, I can get very clear step-by-step -step directions to get me there. So here is the notes area of the hub. If I pan over the documents area of the hub, and right here is locations, where at the bottom you see SharePoint servers that I might be doing corporate collaboration on, and access to my phone, and here, SkyDrive. 
I can touch SkyDrive, and because I've already signed in one time with my Windows Live ID, I don't need to do it again. I don't need to install extra apps. There's no fuss, no hassle. I can jump right into my SkyDrive. I want to give you a little bit of a comparative example. This is the Fish IE page, same page you saw in the video on the desktop, except modified for a phone screen. Other than that, same idea. This is running 50 Fish. And I want to show you how much this hardware acceleration really matters. I'm going to pull this down, and by way of comparison, I've got an iPhone 4 here running the current build of Safari. And the Safari web browser is not taking advantage of hardware acceleration, so you really get a sense for how dramatic the difference is when we use the full power and capability of the device. <laughs> And this particular email, this one from Tally Roth, for, for example, as you can see, there are three little dots in there. That means that this email is not an email, it's a conversation. So we've done conversation view here. You see how can I expand that or collapse it? So it's really easy for me to actually track down a conversation the same way that I do it on my PC. So I've created a group in my uh, um, link a client on my PC that, again, is shown down in here. And I want to ask Eric right here, uh, where, as, where is the latest RFP that the vendor was sending us for that uh, profits project? So I'm just going to ask him here, uh, where is the RFP? And as you can see, I can correct that really quickly and then send it over. So now we're using the secure linked IM system uh, to communicate with my work colleagues and I can have access to all that information at any time. One icon that is called my Outlook inbox, and that is my full inbox. But something that we can do now with this new release is that we're going to be able to have access to folders that are in my uh, folder structure in Exchange, uh, whether it's online or on-premise. So if I go to my Profits Project folder, what I'm doing now is instead of going to my inbox, I'm going to one particular folder directly from my start screen. That lock means that this email has been copy protected. So we fully support as well now in this new release, IRM. So we're going to be able to secure emails that uh, you couldn't uh, actually do something with them depending on the policies that you apply to the email. 